This past Saturday, I ran the Pikes Peak Ascent and finished. And I was very proud of myself for doing so. Um, I got out there on Thursday, the race was on Saturday, and I came home on Sunday. And once I got out there, I really started to feel like, um, can I really do this? <laughs> because, you know, it sounds cool and everything when you hear about the race, but when you're actually up there, you can see the mountain. It's like, oh my gosh, what have I done to myself? The race starts at like 7 a.m. I think I got into town and parked like by a little before 5.30, maybe 5.15 or so. I wanted to, you know, err on the side of caution. I wasn't sure how bad parking was going to be and all that. So I got there plenty early. Um, I dropped off my sweat bag probably earlier than I should have. Um, probably should have taken some photos. I had my camera in my sweat bag and stuff, but just kind of wanted to get my checklist checked off and get that done with. And then I basically walked around a little bit, um, kept drinking water, trying to hydrate, because I knew that was super important at elevation, and basically just soak it all in. The good news that we got before the race was that the skies were clear up above. It was like 27 degrees at the summit, and they had clear skies, like I said. Down below, there was actually a layer of clouds between the summit and ourselves, so we had it was cloudy for like the first half of the race. The forecast had been kind of sketchy. It, they were talking about rain or snow or hail, um, possibly big winds, and so I had no idea how to dress for this thing. I really didn't. Even under normal circumstances, it's kind of hard to guess because there's such a temperature difference, but with, you know, possible rain or snow, it really threw a wrench in the, in the work. So I was, I brought like a whole suitcase full of running gear and I was like, I'll wait till the last second to figure, sort out what I should actually wear. Um, so what I went with was tights, shorts on top of that. I had a base layer and then a t-shirt. And then I carried a coat with me and had hat and gloves in the pockets of my coat. And as it turned out, I was overdressed but I really wanted to err on the side of caution because I was like, I'm not going to get stranded up there or um, possibly worse. They, they, they were warning us that if you got up to the tree line and you were underdressed, they were going to make you turn around and like stop you from even continuing. And I really didn't, that's the last thing I wanted after working all that way and, and training and all that to, to, you know, get turned at the doorstep. So yeah, as it turned out, I was a little overdressed, but of all the things that could have happened, that's probably the, the, the least uh, of my worries. Um, so uh, don't regret that so much. I carried a handheld water bottle the whole way. Um, that worked out really good for me. Um, I had a little zipper pouch that I could put. I put some dried pineapple and also some uh, gels in there uh, to eat along the way. I was in wave three. They started this new wave start. So basically the, the fastest people, the elite people, start right at 7 o'clock and then every minute after that, depending on your bib number, you start at one minute increments. So I started at like 7.03 because of, I was in, in uh, my number was like 3.51, my bib number. I think that worked pretty good. The idea of that is to kind of uh, eliminate the congestion and obviously let the faster runners get out ahead of everyone so they don't somehow get stuck behind someone in single file on the trail. For the portion through town, it was pretty interesting for me. I was, you know, consciously telling myself, don't go out too fast, hold yourself back, pace yourself, go slow, etc., etc. And I was going slow for sure. I was, I was like just under nine minute mile pace, which was good, except the funny thing about it was, was like, I felt like I was, like, the amount of work I had to do to do that was noticeably different than, um, you know, being at my normal elevation. I'm from Lansing, Michigan. The elevation here is like 800 feet. This race started at like 6,300 feet. Um, and I can definitely tell. And we were going uphill too. Even, even the portion of the race that's through town, you're going uphill the whole way. So that was interesting in itself. And I was like, you know, this is going to be a long day. But I kept telling myself, like even the night before, like just think of this as a hike. You know, you can do this. I wasn't worried about my time. Uh, you know, I liked to do as well as I could, but I really wasn't, you know, putting pressure on myself that I had to run the whole way or anything like that because I'm, it's just unrealistic. I, I don't live at altitude. I can, I'm not adapted to it, et cetera, et cetera. So 
It ran for basically the portion all through town up until basically we got to the trail. And then from there it was run when I could, walk in between. Didn't really have any problems along the way. I didn't, I never tripped or anything like that. I like stubbed my toe a few times or something, you know, just like stumbled a little bit. Uh, but no real injuries or anything like that. I didn't get altitude sickness, which was great. I did feel a little bit, it, once we got to the really high elevations, I felt, I wouldn't say I felt loopy, but I just, I could kind of like feel like I, I didn't have enough oxygen or something like, you know, I just felt a little bit, a little bit off or something like that. Um, but, but really I, I didn't have any side effects or anything like that other than just, you know, being very tired. Um, I had to stop like twice once we got towards really close to the, like in the final maybe two miles or so, I stopped maybe twice in there just to catch my breath because your heart really starts pounding when you're not used to that altitude and you're, and you're marching along. So it was really a great, great feeling when I got to the top. I was like, I couldn't believe it. Once we got to the tree line, you could see up to the finish line and it may as well have been on the moon for how far away it looked because it was just like, oh my gosh, I still got to go all that way, you know. So I, for the most part, I tried to look straight ahead, just put one foot in front of the other and not even think about how much further I had to go up. Because like, even like I said, you get to mile 10 and you're like, okay, I'm like, you know, three fourths of the way done here. I should have this in the bag, but then you look up and it's like, oh my gosh, I still gotta go that far. So I, for the most part, I focused on just going straight in the line, making the next step, you know, not tripping or falling, that kind of thing, not tripping someone else. It was pretty, well, for the speed I was going, there was, you know, quite a lot of other people. Um, so frequently, even if you had wanted to go faster, you really couldn't because there were people in front of you. It's a single file trail uh, for most of the way. There are wider areas where you can pass. And, you know, people are good about, you know, if you say on the left, you know, you can squeeze by them and stuff like that. But, you know, there were quite a few times where there's like a line of 10 people in front of you and there's just like no going, there's no, nothing you can do about it. But yeah, the, the only um, real injury quote I saw um, was there was a guy with about half a mile to go or something like that. I was walking, we were, we were hiking along the trail and all of a sudden relaying down, uh, people calling for rescue. And so I relayed the message on down. Fi eventually we worked our way up to the, where the guy was, of course, and he was just screaming. And I mean, even other people were saying that like they were afraid to look because the way he sounded, I mean, it sounded like he had a bone sticking through his leg or something like that. Like it sounded really bad, but it was only cramps, but uh, evidently really bad <laughs> cramps because I've had cramps in my life. I've never been screaming like that. But yeah, that was the only thing I really saw. I saw one guy trip and he was fine. He got up. For the most part, you know, the weather, we lucked out. It wasn't slip that slippery. There were some wet spots from the night before it had rained. There was actually a flash flood warning the night before. I was like, you got to be kidding me, you know. <laughs> For the most part, trail conditions were good. The weather was better than could be expected. I had to take off my base layer about halfway up because I was just dying. So, like, if I could have seen the future and knew what the weather was going to be like, I would have underdressed. I might not have even worn my tights. I might have just worn shorts and a t-shirt. Um, it was very cold once I got on top and stopped moving. But I had a sweat bag with plenty of clothes there, so I would have been fine. As far as, like, the um, logistics of the race... They were uh, really wonderful, the volunteers there, there were aid stations like every, I don't know, maybe three miles on average or so, and they had like snacks and like I had grapes and M&Ms and I um, can't remember all what else, but lots of, they had salty snacks and they had people to fill up your water, they had pitchers of water so you could fill up your water bottle easily instead of pouring in little cups, they had Gatorade of course. Um, I ended up taking mostly water, which is different than what I normally do. I started with Gatorade and started drinking that. That's what I was preloaded in my in my bottle. But uh, I switched to water uh, when I, that ran out, basically. And a couple times I just got cups of Gatorade on top of that. So 
tried to mix that up. Um, I ate, I did eat along the way, even my my um, dried pineapples I had and my uh, gels. So I was consciously trying to drink a lot more and eat more than I normally would in a race, just because of the altitude. And I have heard that uh, uh, hydration is especially important. Didn't really have any problems there. I didn't have any, you know, have to go to the bathroom or anything along the way. You know, pretty much everything went about as well as it could. Um, it was definitely harder than I anticipated, which probably sounds silly for like, you know, it's 13 miles up a mountain. Uh, that's about as hard as it's going to get, you know, but it was really hard. Like it, you, you can't prepare for that altitude. You know, I'm in really in really good shape. I'm in the best shape of my life. The week before I ran this race, um, I ran like 122 miles in eight days. I'm as fit as I've ever been. I can run pretty darn fast. But like the last mile of this race took me a half an hour, you know, because I mean, I, it's just like your heart is just beating through your chest when you're not used to that altitude. So, I mean, just walking is like hard work. <laughs> it was a heck of a feeling to get to the top. I was like, I couldn't even believe it. Like I was just really proud of myself. It was really great achievement. I'm really glad I did it. Um, I would definitely recommend it, assuming you're in shape and you can do it, you know. Uh, I definitely would caution people, like, don't just jump into it. Like, it's a big deal to try to do this. It's not just like running a marathon. Like, uh, you know, this took me longer than running a marathon and it was a lot harder work because it's like a 12, 11, 12% 12 incline the whole way. And when you're doing that for hour after hour, uh, you gotta, you, you know, that's not easy. So definitely know whether you're capable of doing it or not, but it is a really, it's a magnificent feeling when you get to the top and you're like, I just, you know, ran slash walk slash hike, whatever you want to call it, up this mountain. And I did it. And I didn't even think I could do it. Like, I'm a pretty competent person when it comes to running, you know, like I know I can run a marathon, but I was sincerely like, I don't know if I can do this, like, this is going to be really hard, but um, I did it, you know, just keep putting one foot in front of the other, stop, fill up on food and water when you need to, be smart about it, and you can probably do it. So I definitely would recommend it, it's kind of a bucket list kind of a race, it's really cool, it's beautiful surroundings, I went out and saw Garden of the Gods while I was out there, wish I would have had more time actually out there, I only had four days basically, so... Um, didn't have a whole lot of time, especially when you factor in the race, and after that I was pretty much shot as far as wanting to do anything the rest of the day, so, and I had to leave early in su Sunday morning as well, but um, all in all, it was really great, I'm really proud of myself, and uh, I would recommend it, so uh, thanks for watching, I'll be back with more videos, I'm going to do a couple shoe reviews coming up, so uh, stay tuned for those, and thanks again.